Shut up and sit down. Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. I am the Cyber Reef Guru, thank you for watching. Um, this is going to be my relatively early video about St. Patrick's Day and making things for St. Patrick's Day. So we have this little uh, tree, ornament tree that we purchased actually at a craft fair this past summer. And as the different seasons have gone along, I've made different hanging ornaments using my 3D printer um, to fill the area on the tree as well as purchasing uh, things. So this is just gonna be a video about the parts that I made, uh, the ornaments for St. Patrick's Day. I'm kind of proud of them. I should give you a quick uh, glimpse of them right here before I walk you through the process. So got a little uh, pot of gold with um, some gold on the side. You got the obligatory four leaf clover, which goes like this, right? Put a little hook on it. And then the leprechaun hat with a belt. Um, you can see from some of these uh, prints here, there are multiple colors. I only have a single extruder, Prusa I3 Mark II. Um, so I'll walk you through the process and how they do multiple colors on the Prusa with one extruder if you're not so lucky to have the four extruder model. All right, <clears throat> so let's get to it. Okay, <clears throat> so we're back. Uh, what you see here in front of you is uh, Fusion 3D. I took some vector art, which I will show you in a minute, and pulled it into Fusion and created these 3D parts from it. And so let me switch over to Inkscape, show you the hat. Uh, so this hat here, um, I started with the original image here. I took this image and turn it into this hat. So you can see what I did is I basically just deleted all the text down here, I deleted the other hat, and deleted all the text in the middle, and then I um, uh, traced the hat and created a little bit more, an image that was a little bit easier to print. So I uh, also have, so in addition to the hat, we have the four-leaf clover, which is nothing miraculous. Um, I actually just found a four-leaf clover on uh, Google Images, traced it here in Inkscape, uh, tweaked it a little bit, and that's what we have there. And last is the pot of gold. Um, I colorized it here. Did a, quite a lot of editing on this one, actually. The, the picture that I made it from was very detailed, uh, and I just had to delete all that detail. All right, so what you see here, and I will show you from a... Uh, let me turn off the bodies and show you some of the sketches. So... Uh, <clears throat> Here, uh, so I created uh, two different sketches here. Um, the basic a pot of gold here with uh, the coin. I deleted the coins that came with the pot of gold. They looked just like blobs attached to the side. Um, and I'll show you what I did in a minute um, on how to get there. And then the four leaf clover and the, and the hat. Now you can see here the pot of gold is significantly larger than the, the hats and the and the four leaf clover. I uh, wasn't really expecting that when I imported it. So what I did is I actually extruded it at size and then I scaled it afterwards. Um, so we will turn off the sketches here, turn the bodies back on, and there you go. Turn the four leaf clover on. So what you can see here is the pot of gold uh, with the coins. I just took the coins and I replicated the bodies here. Um, and I can show, it, show you that to you. Um, I think, I want to say, we're, if we go into the timeline all the way down here, there you go. Um, so going one by one through the timeline, um, it's playing it for you. Not exactly what I intended it to do, but apparently that's what it does. Um, I just wanted to skip one ahead, uh, show you how I built up the coins here. Uh, and then I just took them and joined them into one, one thing, and then I moved them a little bit closer, and then I joined it to the actual model itself. Alright, so let's jump to the end again. <clears throat> Then I took that entire thing and I scaled it, uh, put some hooks on it, uh, you can see, uh, so I can hang it from the tree. So uh, I'm going to show you real quick, if we get a little bit of angle here, uh, you can see what we have going on here. So the coins and the gold are extruded one millimeter, um, and the pot is extruded two millimeters. The reason for that is we're going to use the uh, M600 command that Prusa supports to switch the filament at one millimeter and then print in a different color. Um, the hat here is a little bit more complicated, uh, but it's the same process. It's just one millimeter hat, which we're going to print in green. Uh, the belt here, which is printed in black. And then the um, the buckle here, which we're going to print in yellow. And you've seen the pictures already, so kind of get a feel for what we're doing there. So it's just one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter. 
um, pretty straightforward. The uh, four leaf clover here, I think, is two millimeters tall total. Yeah. And then for this guy, what I did is I just took this image, I scaled it uh, X and Y down by 50%, but I left the Z height the same, so it's still uh, one millimeter, one millimeter, and two millimeters. All right, so um, I don't think I have. I get simplify up. Yes, I do. All right, so here we go. We got Simplify 3D. Um, I, I have not tried this in Slicer. Uh, I'll be honest with you, just have not had a lot, a lot of luck with Slicer at all uh, for generating support materials. If you don't have supports, it seems to work fine. Um, but um, so maybe the new version that was just released a couple days ago, maybe I'll have better luck for. I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. So here is Slicer. What we got going on here? For anyone who's familiar with, uh, I'm sorry, this is Simplify 3D. For anyone who is familiar with Simplify 3D, uh, you can create different processes, and that's how we do what we need to do here. I'm doing it uh, for uh, because I'm using different filament of different temperatures and different bed settings, um, not because I'm doing the color change. You can do the color change in one process. In, with a post-processing um, process, <laughs> uh, but in this case I'm doing it because I have different colors. So the base here is, uh, I did a, a Pet G green that I had from Maker Geeks from, let's see, I ordered it probably back in November or time frame. I got a, a random pack of the Crystal Pet G and then the regular Pet G. So, in this particular uh, filament needs 80 degrees bed temperature and then 100, 260 degrees for the um, extruder temperature. Uh, I inadvertently printed the first time with 240. Uh, <laughs> I learned out the hard way that it was way too cold for this temperature. It just wasn't sticking. It wasn't extruding properly. So the next uh, layer here that I have is a high temperature, what I'm calling a high temperature PLA. It is uh, the black that I just received in the Maker's uh, Geek uh, monthly uh, Maker Box. So I'll link uh, in a card to that video if you want to watch the unboxing of that. It is, uh, it's called Black as Night, I think. Uh, it is freaking black. It, it's actually flat black, which is very interesting. Normally from a PLA perspective, uh, it's a little glossy. In fact, it's usually very glossy. This came out completely flat black. I don't know why. Maybe that's because I, I was over extruding a little bit because uh, the, the perimeters actually look a little uh, shiny. So so for this one, the temperature, I set the left the bed temperature at 80. It doesn't matter because you're not actually printing on the bed because you already have that layer, that one millimeter layer down. But in this one is a 230 degrees. And then the last one here is, uh, again, switch back to Pet G because I have the Maker Geeks Pet G transparent or translucent crystal series yellow. And this temperature was printed, again, 80, to 80 bed temperature at 80 degrees, doesn't really matter, 240 degrees. So these temperatures uh, change over time. So it's important uh, when you're crafting your G-code, there's a little manual process at the end where you want to insert the M600 command. I don't use the Prusa website uh, dual color widget or even the thing that you can download because if you use Z-Hop, which I do use, uh, it inserts M600s every time you do a Z-Hop, <laughs> which is certainly not what you want to do. So here is, oops, let me pull up the, I don't know if I still have it open. Here we go, we'll pull up the hat, two color G-code offset. And so this is, the G code generated by Simplify 3D. It's got a lot of comments in here. I found the fastest way is just to search for what you're looking for. In this case, I know that I'm changing temperatures every time that I want to switch filament. So I search for the M104 command, which will show me every time there's a temperature setting of the extruder. So, and I'll give you a second way to do this if you're not switching your temperature. So first one is the original temperature of the comment, and here we go. Uh, so this is the start of the G-code here. This is where it's saying set the first temperature at 260 uh, for the first extruder, or the only extruder in this case. The next one here is the uh, 230, which is the high temperature PLA, I believe. Um, let's see, that would be the black. I actually ended up printing it, I think, at 
235. I'm trying to remember the temperatures I did. This is the actual G code file, so this is what I printed. But anyway, right after you set the temperature, do the M600 command. Don't put the M600 command before the temperature set because what this allows it to do, it allows the printer to go ahead and say, hey, go to 230 and then go switch the filament. So while you're twiddling with the filament and you're switching the filament, it gives the printer time to adjust to the uh, new temperatures. Uh, and you know, it takes you a you know, minute or two or longer to switch the filament, depending on uh, you know, what's going on, more than enough time for the, temp uh, for the printer to adjust to the temperature. Uh, the first time I printed this, I had, them, I had the M600 first, and what I found is it started printing at a completely wrong temperature, which was fine, it adjusted relatively quickly. But for the hat, um, there's some really small parts in there, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Now this one here, again, lesson learned uh, for me, uh, uh, 240, then it sets the fan to 255 and 600. Uh, it didn't seem to me, if I remember properly, that the fan actually kicked on until I was done extruding the, the or done switching the filament. I'm not sure why. I don't know if that was just me or whatever, but... So it, there was a lot of temperature variation here. The temperature actually dropped down to probably, you know, 225 uh, while I was doing this. So it, it seemed to work fine. It printed. You saw the part. It, it looks it looks great. So And that's it. So the other way to do this, rather than looking for the M104 command, is to search for the layer that you want to swap it out at. So if you want to print to one millimeter height, uh, and I'm printing at 0.2 millimeters, uh, that's a pretty simple math, right? So uh, 0.2, uh, one divided into one is, you know, five. Uh, so you want to look for layer six is where you want to change the 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 temperature. As you can see here, there's a comment layer six z equals 1.2. So search for the layer you want to switch on. So I, this is why I did one one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeters. Super easier from a math perspective. So you want to look for layer six, um, and then I believe layer twelve. If I want to do the math properly, and let's look for the next one. Layer six, layer eleven. Interesting. Um, I probably would have put it at layer twelve. So I'm gonna have to figure out the math on that one. So, oh, because it's five. Yeah. Duh. Okay. Sorry. Six plus five is eleven. <laughs> For some reason, I was just doubling it. Okay, so there you go. You can see I can do math in my head, <laughs> but not very well. So search for the layer you want it to hop on and just insert that uh, M600 command. Again, if you're using all one filament type of filament temperature, you don't have to uh, toy with the temperatures here. You don't need multiple processes in Simplify 3D. If you're using Slicer, uh, you can use the same sort of, of process. However, Slicer does not insert these comments at the layer switches. So you need to get a little bit more crafty with Slicer and, and you know insert a layer switch or a fan uh, switch or something that you can find in the G-code to do this. Or, alternatively, turn off the uh, hop and use the Prusa widget and set the height. And then it'll find it. Um, you can actually search for the uh, G-code for setting the G-height, which in this case here, we're setting the G-height to um, 2.2. So you can search for that uh, as well. You can see because I'm using Z-Hop, it sets the height here multiple times. So this is why the Prusa thing doesn't work. Every time it, it runs across a G1, Z2.2, it's gonna throw in an M600 uh, command and you certainly don't wanna be switching your filament um, after this short period of time right here. Um, so it would really uh, try to get you to switch the filament here and here and here, right? Um, that's 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 bad. I, I've experienced this. I've experienced it by um, <laughs> not paying attention that closely to the G code. All right, so that's that's it. Uh, that's how I did this. So um, you can see the output. I'm gonna actually uh, pull some uh, pictures in and show them to you so that you can see some better uh, high quality pictures. So stand by. Okay, so what you see here in front of you is the Clover. It is the simplest of the three models. It is just simply green printed at uh, two millimeters tall. No magic here. Um, next picture is the pot of gold. It is the, what I'll characterize as the second to most complex because it's got uh, uh, a color change. You can see the yellow crystal series Maker Geeks Pet G was printed from the first millimeter and then on top of that was printed the uh, black as night maker geeks uh, high temperature pla it's actually uh, called uh, something else 
pro series or something I'll, I'll put the link in the description down below so the last one is actually perhaps maybe the one I'm the most proud of because it is three pictures uh, three different uh, colors from a single extruder it, I think it turned out uh, marvelous I was a little worried about the crystal series the black kind of shining through uh, which it does a little bit it doesn't uh, pop as much as it could if it were you know yellow uh, trans or opaque uh, yellow or something like this but I think it turned out wonderfully and so uh, this is amazing so it, it does take a little bit of time and diligence uh, you know sitting here and watching it print but but uh, I think it turns out great so I hope you like those videos uh, or the pictures and the videos uh, in the description if there are any questions about the actual process or what I did just feel free to leave them in the comments below if you like the video as always give it a thumbs up if you don't like it I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway any additional questions, just let me know. I hope you enjoy the St. Patrick's Day holiday, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.